Hi everyone! In this video I will show you how to sell items on Roblox Marketplace. It is really easy. Before beginning, it would help out the channel a lot for more game development videos if you like, comment, share and subscribe. Thanks! Let's begin! I will continue from the persistent inventory video. If you haven't watched it yet, the link is on the card and in the description. I made a copy of the project, saved it to Roblox with the name Marketplace and I should go to Game Settings, Security and Enable, Enable Studio Access to API Services because we'll use data stores. Let me remind you how it worked. Let's play. We can collect multiple items and we can use them and change our health and mana levels. If I stop and play again, it is persistent. It remembers the state of our inventory when we left the game previously and continues from that state when we play again. Now, instead of scattering these items freely around, we'll implement a marketplace for the players to purchase items because we want to make some money from our games. I will delete the potions folder. Instead, I will create some place signifiers for the players to go and purchase the items. Let's create a cylinder and put it somewhere like here. Let's rotate it by 90 degrees in z-axis. Zoom in. Change its size to 0.5 in y and z-axis. I will change the material to wood to make it look fancier. Let's set the brick color to something like dark orange. Now I want an upper part that will make this look like a sign. Let's create a block. Position it like this. Change its size to 2 in y and 0.1 in z-axis. Something like this. This time, let's change the material to wood plank since this looks like a board and change the brick color to dark orange. We have a nice wooden sign here. Let's make this upper part a child of the pole. Let's rename this as base. Right click and select group to combine everything into one model. Under parts, I will create a surface GUI to display some information. I will set the face as back so that it looks towards us. I will create a frame under it to see the label. The size scale of the frame will be 1 in X and Y with no offsets, so it fills out all the space of its parent. Inside that, I will put an image label and also a text label. The image label will be square, so I'm gonna add a UI aspect ratio constraint. I want to keep the aspect ratio as 1 since I want it square shaped. I will change its anchor point to 0.5 so that its position is measured from its center. For position scale, I want 0.54x for it to be centered horizontally. If I type 0.54y as well, it will be centered vertically also, but I want it a little bit lower, so 0.6 is better. For the size, I want the height to be the dominant axis. So let's go to UI aspect ratio constraint and change the dominant axis as height. I will also change the aspect type as scale with parent size. Go back to the image label size. X is irrelevant because we selected height as the dominant axis. For Y, I'll use 0.8 with no offset. We moved it a little lower than the center, so 0.8 should fit nicely. Similarly, click on the text label, change its size to 1 in X and 0.2 in Y axis so that it looks something like that. I will now select all UI elements and set border size pixel to 0. For the text label, I also want to set background transparency to 1 so that it doesn't have a visible background. Let's change the default text to buy mana potion. Very direct marketing message. I will import some images as well. I will use the same icons as before. I will create a specific part under the base to serve as a collider for the player to enter to activate our boots. Let's change its shape to cylinder and change the orientation to 90 degrees in z-axis so that it sits up. Let's scale it up and position somewhere like that. Of course, I want it invisible, so I move up the transparency to 1. I will rename it as Collider. I will make it anchored to prevent it from falling down and also deselect Can Collide so that it doesn't block the player. We want the player to enter it to make sales. And for these two parts, I will deselect can touch. We won't be looking at that. So we have set up ourselves a nice boot to send mana potion. Now we can copy and paste this to have another boot for the health potion. Let's space them apart a bit. For the second boot, I will change the image to the health icon. I will change the default text as well by health potion. The boots look good, but I want to add an item type information under the models for us to distinguish which item the boot represents with a variable. 
So I add a string value under model and rename as item type. I will duplicate and put one under the second model as well. This is the mana portion, so for the value I type mana portion. This one is the health portion, so I type health portion. This will be the identifier variable for us to distinguish if the player is at the mana boot or the health boot. Let's create a folder to put these models in. Name it market stations and put the models inside. Now comes the fun part. Let's create a script. Name it market stations as well. First, let's get access to the folder. Local folder equals to script.parent. Now I want to find all the children that are models. Local children is equal to folder colon get children. I will iterate through all children inside that children variable to find the models. We can use a for loop for that. For i index and v value in i pairs of children, so we will go through all children one by one. But we know that this script is a child of that folder as well, so we need to exclude that. If v is not equal to script, then we'll access the collider through base. See, we have the base here and the collider is under it. Then we'll get the touched event and connect to that event with a function. And for the function, we can use the other part parameter, which is filled in by the event by default. Now I want to understand if the object that has touched this collider is a player or not. For this, first I'll check if there's a model associated with that part. Local model equals to other part colon find first ancestor of class. We are looking for model here. For it to be a player, it should include a humanoid in the model. So if we have a model and if that model has a humanoid in it, I'll type find first child which is a humanoid. And other part is equal to model.primary part. So we are checking if that humanoid's primary part is in touch with our collider. If this is the case, I will fire an event. Let's create that event first. Inside server storage, I will create a bindable event. And I'll name that event purchase requested. So here I'll go local purchase requested event is equal to game.server storage because that's where we have created the event and dot purchase requested, which is our event. I'm gonna fire that event here, column fire. I need to pass in the player, so I need to find the player. We can use the player service for that, which contains player objects for clients that are connected to a Roblox game server. Local player service equals to game column get service players. Here I'll use player service column get player from character and model represents the character so I pass that in. Then I'll also put in the item type of v so v.itemType.value as the second parameter of the event. This is how we are gonna call the event whenever a player touches the collider of one of our boots. After that, we should respond to that event with another script. Let's create that script now. Under server script service, I create a script and name as market manager. I want to keep the scripts on the server side to make it more secure since this includes monetary operations. In the Roblox documentation, under marketplace service, if you scroll down all the way, there is a code sample. If I expand it, I can see the whole code. I will copy that and paste it here. Selling stuff is a sensitive issue, it involves people's money, so I don't want to mess with the default code provided by Roblox for this. I find it safer and I recommend you the same. In this code, the most important parts are these two IDs for the product. We'll replace them with our own IDs and we are gonna fill out this information here. The inside is just an example for buying 100 gold and what happens next. I'll clean the insides of these functions, we'll fill them later based on what happens in our own game when the player purchases something. Now I'll create some developer products to sell. For this, I click home, game settings and monetization. Here if you scroll down, there's a section called developer products. I will create one and I'll change its name by selecting edit. This one will be mana portion. Let's give it a price. 10 robux sounds fair. Save it. I'll create another one. Edit that as well, this time health portion. 10 robux for this one as well. You can set whatever price you find appropriate for your own products. Here we can see the product ID for each item. We can copy the product ID by selecting copy ID to clipboard. This one is for the health portion. I will paste it here for now. I will go back and get the product ID of the mana portion as well. 
Here, I'll create a table to store the IDs in. Local IDs equals to table. The first element will be health portion. The ID will be this one, I think. Let's create another element in our table. Mena portion equals to this one. Here, instead of typing the number, I can refer to them from the table. IDs index health portion. And here, IDs with the index of mana portion. We were firing this purchase requested event, so I'll copy it and paste here. Whenever this event is fired, I'll create a function to work with that. Our function will take in the player information and the item type information. Based on these two information, I'll go marketplace service, which is already added here, colon prompt product purchase. It asks me which player, we know that it is underscore player. It also asks for the product ID. Based on the item type, I can give the product ID. So I go IDs and inside I'll type underscore item type. If it is health portion, it will point to this ID. If it is mana, it will point to this one. This is how we'll prompt the purchases, but we also need to integrate these purchases into the game. In the previous inventory videos, we were using the item collected event, this one here. So I'll use the same event. Copy and paste. Item collected event is game.serverStorage.itemCollected. I'll fire this event when these two functions are called. So for the health portion, I'll fire the event with the player information and the item type, which will be health portion. I copy this, paste here, this time mana portion. These functions will return true to indicate that the purchase has been successful. We can get rid of these comment lines from the default code. I think that's all. Let's see if it is working. Hit play. Oops, I forgot to anchor these objects, guys. Let's go back and select all parts just to be sure and anchor them. It looks better, right? Everything holds together. Let's approach the mana potion boot. Voila! We can see a prompt that asks if we would like to buy a health potion for 10 Robux. Hmm, it doesn't sound right. If I approach the health potion boot, yeah, this time it asks if I want to buy a mana potion. So these are mixed up. No worries, it should be an easy fix. I probably mixed up the product IDs. Let's see here. Mana potion ends with 6710. Let's check. Yeah, the IDs are mixed up. Let me fix that real quick. You can do a better job than me and add descriptive comments next to them when you first paste the IDs to prevent such mix-ups. Anyway, let's play again. There we go. This time it asks for a mana potion like it should. If you read the disclaimer below, this is a test purchase. So I can purchase without actually paying any robux. How fun. You can see that my mana potions get increased. And similarly, the health potion is also increased. If I use a health potion, stop the game and play again, it is persistent. 2 mana and 1 health potion. So this is how we can easily sell developer products on the marketplace in Roblox Studio. Now go sell your own products and make some money. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to support the channel for more videos. If you want a new game development tutorial, let me know down in the comments. You can get access to the Roblox project file from Patreon. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.